here we are again chaps back on the plot so first thing daily is desperately desperately need deadheading mm -mm -mm. and i think i'm probably a bit late at water so that's not great but everything seems to be surviving okay actually i mean the courgettes were the ones that i was really worried about and they seem to be absolutely fine doing really well polytunnel's struggling a bit though i think yeah girlies Hello darlings, you coming out? Ready to come out girlies? You come out and play? I think I saw Hada. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Magnificent morning. I meant to be up here a bit earlier than this actually, but the back garden was so cool because we don't get any sun in the back garden. I just went out there with a cup of coffee and then it was really difficult to move because it was quite cold this morning. I mean, cold. It wasn't cold. But compared to how it has been, it was pretty chilly. It was like 16 and it was unbelievably blissful. But anyway, now it's nine o'clock and the temperature's like by the second and I have a list a mile long of things that need doing today as per usual so do I have a cup of tea first though I think that's what I'm gonna do get the comfy chair out get a cup of tea sit down then action Just been lying there and I just looked sideways and there is always something, isn't there? Somebody has attacked the potatoes overnight. They were fine yesterday and now they're not fine. Look at this. Look at the state of this. So the bags have been ripped at the side and the potatoes have been dragged out. Plants are all over the place. What have they got? What, three bags they've ripped here? Look at that, that's a decent potato. But look, the big ones here, look at that. Blooming great claw marks in there or teeth or something. So that's a waste. That's a real shame. There are some nice potatoes here. I'm gonna to have to just get these out of the bag, but look, they're just chewed. It's not right. I want to chew the potatoes, not some random animal. I guess I'll add that to the list of jobs for today then.
So interestingly, the three that it's actually whoever it was that's actually attacked are all the same variety. And they are all a variety called Sagita. But when you look up the variety Sagita, it does actually say that they're supposed to be one of the finest tasting potato varieties out there, which is why we decided to try it. But uh, maybe that's why... <laughs> Maybe that's why they've ripped these three bags open. The problem is that although we have got a few from here, I'm not unhappy with the amount from here. All the big ones have been chewed, so I'm just gonna have to get rid of them. And uh, any potential jacket potato experiences of the Sajita potato, um, unfortunately are not gonna be ours this year. <laughs> oh, fantastic, fantastic paper bag. Might not have been my best choice there. <laughs> Cargo was too heavy. We've had a critical failure. just running through a bit of a list of what needs doing. So you know that list that really uh, messed me up a couple of weeks ago that really freaked me out because it was just so much to do. Um, actually it ended up really helping after I got over the initial um, heart attack. I've worked my way through pretty much all the things on that list. There's still some things left over obviously, but um, I'm just transferring them onto the new list. But I've, you know, once again, you know, another long list of things that need doing, but it does help writing a list. At least you can see how much you need doing. And I'm just trying to work out what I want to do today because I'm going to be up here for basically two quite long days. I've got today, although I have to leave by about two. And to be honest, I'm not sure if it's going to get too hot. So I might have to go and come back this evening. That might be what I do. Um, but, but yeah, I've got today and I've got tomorrow. So just trying to work out what needs doing what now things keep being added to the list obviously as I'm sat here just like looking up the allotment I can see all the other jobs I haven't got listed down <laughs> but we're getting there we are definitely making progress I feel like I'm really on top of it one of the things that I do have to do I'm probably going to do that this morning actually is sew the brassicas so normally I do brassicas in like two waves I do one really quite early at the beginning of the year like February March time and they're all being planted out or will have been planted out about a month ago here uh, but I practically missed the entirety of that season um, the beginning part of this season was really a bit chaotic and I just didn't have a grip on what was going on <laughs> uh, but I did get the Cavalinero the Cavalinero was the only thing that I really got sewn at the right time but now that I've really caught up and I'm back on track like I'm in control again now <laughs> I'm on it for the second sewing. So I'm gonna get all the things that, I'm gonna get all the things that I would normally sew at this time of year sewed, but I'm probably also going to sew some things that are a bit of a gamble, just because we don't have them. Sorry, there's a lawnmower. <laughs> just because we don't have them from the first sewing, it's like, it's just worth a try, just see if they'll happen. So I'm gonna do that. That's something that must be done this week, probably today. Yeah, I'm just sat here looking out across it. Although I've got this huge list of things, actually, it's all right. It is all right. I do have to make some decisions on what I am going to sow and what I'm not even going to bother trying with. And I've still got the bag of seeds in the shed, so I'm just going to have a bit of a sort through and see what I think is worth doing and what's not. So out of all that, there's actually quite a lot of stuff that can just be sown direct, you know, like turnips and uh, spring onions and all that kind of stuff. There's also radishes. And the first lot that I sowed, which was between the Cavalinero, they were just starting to form, you know, form the actual radish underneath. And then they just bolted because of the heat. So 
as you can see they're all flowering under the netting <laughs> So I'm going to sow some more radishes, but I'm undecided about these chaps. I don't know whether to pull them out because they're getting quite big and I don't know whether they're impacting on the growth of the Cavalinero or whether to leave them to go. And although we didn't get any radishes out of them, we will get the seed pods, which are just as delicious. So I'm not really sure what to do. And I'm thinking if I pull them out, will that be a total waste or will the girlies like them? That's the question. I've never tried them on radish tops, I don't think. If they like them, I'll probably pull the majority of these out to give the Cavalinero a bit more space. But if they're not interested, I'll just leave them to seed pod. Yeah, pretty much total lack of interest in radish tops. So I guess I'll be leaving them to go to seed. This is the bed that we got the Red Duke of York potatoes out of last week. And I'm gonna just cover it in a load of horse manure, well rotted horse manure, like we do with all the beds, give it a really good mulch. And it's gonna be one of the beds that I'm gonna direct sow into. So like I was talking earlier about what well, obviously the radishes, but also um, turnips, swede, the spring onions, I'm gonna put some more rocket in here, but I'm not gonna do that today because the weather is meant to get so hot, it's just pointless i'll just wait a week and do it after that okay are you ready for a bit of excitement chaps <laughs> in the end of this bed is something that i'd completely forgotten i'd even planted until i did the plot tour what was it like a couple of weeks ago the june plot tour i'd completely forgotten about them and then when we were at hampton court last week and looking at their onions i remembered them again so I went to check on them and actually they're starting to look like they've got a little bit of allium leaf miner. You see how this is all curling over a bit? So I think it's time to get them out of the ground. But from the top, they look all right, don't they? I'm really seriously trying to rein in my optimism about this, but... Seriously, all the champion onions in the world couldn't make me any happier than this onion has, or those onions have. There's a little bit of allium leaf miner, like I said, you can just see it in the way the leaves are curling, but it's so beautiful. These are the pink panther ones. Do you remember when I was, um, when we went to Bath and Bristol and Derby, uh, I picked them up at that garden centre on the way back. They were from sets rather than seed and they are magnificent and I'm so excited. <sighs> oh, the beauties. Actually, I've just suddenly realized it's too hot. <laughs> just in the last like 20 minutes, the temperature has risen so much. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home and do some work at home and then come back here later. I've got to take Annie to the vet at four. So I'll take him to the vet 
get him sorted out and then I'll come straight back up here. I think that's the plan because all of a sudden just boof. Okay, girlies, I'm sorry you got to go back inside, Whirlers. I know, I know. But in the middle of the day up here, there's just no shade. Like I'm inside the shed because it's the only place with shade. Early mornings, fab. Then late afternoons, fab. Right now, it's like half 11, not fab. <laughs> I'm wondering about whether I should take the seeds home with me and sow them at home. But then I've only just got to carry them back up here, haven't I? Right, ta chaps. I'll see you back here in a couple of hours. Just get my incredibly precious white rot free cargo into my bag. They're glorious. These were the ones that, oh, I'll just put them back in yeah. here. Actually, they need to dry out. out That's yes. why I was going to bring them out here. So. So. Yeah, I mean, they look good. They're like, they're, they're small, they're but they're years. solid. They're not mush, which is good. And don't put any of our ankle. So, and then these are the, these are the Sagita. So we've got quite a few of that sort of size. Um, but we, nice. we also have a lot of ones that have been got by the badger. Oh, I've right. thrown most of them away, but some of them are like that. It is Friday morning and the fact that I'm saying good morning, you might notice that it's not yesterday evening when I said I was coming back to sow the seed. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I did actually come back. I came back twice, but I was carrying stuff for an exciting development. Um, yesterday afternoon, so we've got like a WhatsApp group, you know, of the street, just like of neighbours and stuff. It sort of came from when we were doing the, well, I think it originally started in lockdown, but I only joined it <laughs> when we were having the Jubilee party. But neighbour down the road was getting rid of a load of stuff yesterday and what was she getting rid of? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a deconstructed piece of heaven. It is a swing seat. Oh yes. So yeah, excited much. <laughs> but what it has done is made me think, because we don't actually have anywhere to put it, but I couldn't, hang on, you're a bit high. Mm, that's better. Uh, but I couldn't say no. I just, I've wanted one of those basically my entire childhood and uh, the opportunity arose and I couldn't say no. Now I've got to find somewhere to put it. And we, we can't have it in the back garden at home because it's tiny. It basically, one of those things takes up the entire square footage of our back garden. So I wasn't gonna go there, but I've been slowly nibbling away at the space up this end of the plot. About three years ago, I basically flipped the allotment plot so we had the shed and everything up that end and um, down this end was pretty much wasted space because it's under the oak tree and there wasn't really much growing here apart from a couple of very sad looking apple trees and a green gauge that never produced any green gauges so we flipped the whole lot now we've got the shed down this end and this became kind of like grassy bit where we sit and i've got the barbecue down here and stuff but i have been like nibbling away up there is the d bed outside the shed you know where it's like built round, and i kind of asked you what shape and we all went for d D fab. It's been great, but it has kind of taken out a bit of this patch. But that's great because it's ended up being actually inside the girlies' run and they love it. It's got all the mint and it's got loads of bits and pieces in there for kind of scrabbling around in. So, not going to change any of that. But the area I'm considering is where I've put these two, which are the newest two beds on the plot. This is where the fruit cage used to be. And it's great. It's fine having the two beds. But after we took the fruit cage down, we ended up putting this bench in at the back here because we realised that this patch right here is the last bit of sunshine you get on the whole of our plot. Oh, I've got those windows. I really must do something with them. But yeah, so I'm thinking about moving these two beds into that main space so that we end up with a huge long strip down the centre of the plot with the standard raised bed size and then having the kind of seating area split between the shed which has got the shade in the afternoon and then this area which has got the shade in the morning. Anyway that's all plans. 
The things I have to get done today are watering, obviously, once again. Um, I'm gonna be really careful because it's already like half 10 in the morning, so I left it a bit late. Um, but it's not as hot today, so it's only going to reach a maximum of 24 today, which is deeply, deeply pleasant compared to how it's been, because on Tuesday it's meant to reach 40, and it's never reached 40 before here. The highest temperature ever here was 38.8 a couple of years ago, and I think it's going to be 40, so oh god, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, 24 today, so I'm kind of reveling in it being a little bit cooler before it spikes again and getting a load of watering done today, getting a load of seed sowing done today, and I'm going to pick what's left of the apricots. I brought the ladder up with me, I say ladder, it's a little tiny step ladder. So that'll be interesting, a bit of balancing with the old flip flops. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm excited about moving things around, I can't help it, I just get excited about that sort of thing. Um, so I'm thinking about that while I'm doing other things. I think the first thing is going to be the apricots because um, they're so ripe. I could just, I could basically see them falling off the tree now. So, and the ones that are left are all the ones that are hanging over onto Ron's side where he's got all the brambles. So once they fall, it's very difficult to find them again. So yeah, first job. Apricot harvest 2022. Considering that the whole kitchen table and the dining room table and the freezer is already full of them, I think we've done pretty well. <laughs> I think it's an apricot break time. Which one am I going to have? I think maybe this one. just been having a natter with allotment neighbour on that side about the plans for down here um, and I think I've come to the conclusion that is what I'm going to do. I think that is going to be the perfect space. There's a couple of things I need moving. Obviously the barbecue will need to be shunted but what's also is obviously the uh, tree cabbages are planted in that bed aren't they? Of course because you're always you're always going to plant something permanent in a space that you then realise you need to shunt or move. <laughs> 
But out of that conversation, I've also decided that a lot of the stuff that I've got on my list to direct so I'm just not going to do because it does look like it's going to be 40 on Tuesday and nothing is going to survive that. So I'm not going to sew anything direct, but I've got some things to sew into trays, which I'm going to do. Things like the Green Wave Mustard. Don't know if you remember that from last year. It was brilliant. I've got some Pat Choi to do, also brilliant. Mizuna, all those sort of things that you normally leave till after midsummer. I'm going to get them in. More beetroot, constant. And then two brassicas I am going to do today. Some purple sprouting broccoli and primo cabbage. Blissfully cool in here because it's shaded. Maybe I'll just sew them here and have them sat in the shed rather than the greenhouse until they've germinated and until we get past this burst of heat. I think that's what I'll do. I'm a bit late with the brassicas is an understatement but one of the things so purple sprouting broccoli normally June is about the limit but we are only just into July like what 14 days that's only just <laughs> so I'm gonna have a go with them I'm gonna have a go and the other one that I'm gonna do is actually primo cabbage but this is like a really flexible <laughs> flexible cabbage is that the right way to put it like even on the seed packet, it says you can sow it from February to August. So I'm just going to get some of them in because we've got plenty of space in the brassica beds because all I've got in is the Cavalinero because, well, just because the beginning of this year was a bit dodge. <laughs> but we're back. We are back on track. Everything is coming good. So I want to get these sewn. And then the other things that I want to sew, I want to sew some more lettuces because when I move those two beds, the lettuces that are in there, I'll just harvest and we'll get the ones out. I do have some in the greenhouse, which are about, what, three weeks old. So they will be the first lot I put in and then these lot. So we're kind of getting the, getting the rhythm going slowly, chaps, slowly. Right, what was the other thing that I was gonna sew today? Oh, some more beetroot, some turnips. I was gonna sew the turnips direct. And there was quite a lot of things I was gonna sew direct, but like I say, it's gonna be so hot. So I'm gonna sew some in trays and then once we get over this bit of hot weather, so we've got Wednesday's meant to be thunderstorms and from then it's gonna cool right down. So I'll start doing some direct sewing once once the weather's calmed down a bit because, because I don't know what it's doing at the moment. Crazy. Hey girls, crazy weather, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. The sound that the seed is making, they think it's their tree tin. I'm sorry, girlies. It's not. Soon, though, bubs. Soon. Soon.
Okay, that is the mustard, the pak choy, the mizuna in, the beetroot in. I've sown them in sort of clumps of three, so I'll plant them out in their clumps. I've done the purple sprouting broccoli and the primo cabbage. Um, I'm sure there was something else. I forgot the lettuce. Um... Well, apart from the stuff I'm going to be sowing outside later in the week, this is probably my last seed tray sowing before the next lot of stuff I sow, which is going to be for the winter. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Coming up to one, it's a little bit warm. I'm going to go and get the ladder and I'm going to walk home. Stick it out at home for a couple of hours and then I'll come up and do a really... I'm planning to come up after dinner, actually, and do a water because I didn't get as much watering done as I wanted to this morning, but it's just not a good time now. So I'm going to leave it and come up after dinner. So about like half eight, nine o'clock. Hopefully it'll be nice and cool then. <sighs> yes, warm. Just remembered actually, I wanted to take some beetroot home with me. This is the beetroot which is in one of the beds that I want to eventually move. So um, starting the harvest now is, is good. But these ones have come on really, really nicely. There's a couple in here which are really quite a good size and it's a mixture of Kyogia and Detroit 6. I'm gonna get them in the bag. I'm eternally destined to walk home with leaves sticking out the top of my bag. <laughs>
Good morning. Oh, it's about uh, quarter to seven. It's Monday morning um, and I'm up here to do some watering. So um, the whole weekend, I've got to say, you know that, um, you know the swing seat? I put it together. I haven't done any of the arranging where it's going to be. I've just been dragging it around into the shade. But I have spent two days on it so far. Saturday, I uh, had a barbecue, sat up here, uh, watched the football. Um, didn't get off the, the swing seat for basically the whole day. And yesterday, I did the same thing. But what was nice is yesterday, I did my editing for all this video on the swing seat. It's got a gravitational pull all of its own. You see, I thought the, the comfy chair, you know, I thought that had gravity problems drawn to it constantly. Well, this is a whole new ball game of gravity. But I'm not even gonna, at the moment, it's got a big cover on it and I'm not gonna take the cover off. I've just come up here to do watering because today is the first of the two days of manic heat. I'm going to do a couple of hours of watering, try and get as much water into the ground as I possibly can, particularly in the poly tunnel because they're looking very sad. <laughs> um, I'm going to do that and then we'll have, and then we'll do cheers with a cup of tea because like Monday morning, not a good time for a glass of wine. <laughs> hey girls, that would be bad, wouldn't it? That would be bad. Yeah. Okay. Watering. I'm quite excited. I've got the new, um, I've got the new Rivers of London book on Audible. So I'm going to listen to that for a couple of hours and get as much water into the ground as possible. It's already a very warm. <laughs> Watering complete. I've just got the hose on the um, jasmine on the side there because the jasmine is like, ah. <laughs> and that chaps is the end of the week. I've got nothing, um, you know, proper to cheers you with because it is now 9.35 on Monday morning. So I'm not gonna do that, but actually I've got problems with the aeroplanes. I'm really sorry about that. But there's a couple of things I wanted to say before I left. So do you remember at Hampton Court, last week. I'm going to have to be quick because I'm saying this between aeroplanes going over. <laughs> but at Hampton Court last week when I was listening to Raymond Blanc talk about Le Manoir and their gardens that they had there, he also had the woman who is in charge of their like variety selection was talking and I found it really interesting. They had done some huge trials. Oh, now we've got a helicopter, excellent. But they'd done some huge trials, particularly with beans. They have done, I think she said it was something like 36 varieties of French bean, um, like two years ago, sorry about the helicopter. Uh, two years ago, uh, three years ago, maybe it was. And they had come up with the two that they thought were the absolute best for flavor and the amount of beans that they gave them. And that was Maxi, always something isn't there that helicopter's coming like right over the top of us brilliant <sighs> sorry about the noises but the two bean varieties I'm gonna get this out I mean, don't know what's going on they're everywhere um, Maxi and Helios two finest French bean varieties that they grow and that's now what they grow always for the restaurant 
Also, they did a trial on broad beans, autumn sown and spring sown, and they agreed that absolutely classic Claudia Aguadolfi is the best broad bean for autumn sown. They said it was just better than everything else. However, their spring sown one that did that outperformed everything else was called Eleanor Express. So I'm gonna try that in the spring this coming year. What else did they do? Oh, the other thing that they were talking about that was quite interesting was that, you know, when you do stuffed courgette flowers, well, they don't actually grow the same variety for the flowers that they do for getting the courgettes. So they grow a totally different variety and the variety is called Nero di Milano. They use them because, you know, sometimes when you pick courgettes very, very small, they're quite bitter. Well, apparently for this one, if you pick them when they're really small and they've got the perfect flower on them, it's just, they're just the best, but they don't make good big courgettes. So just thought it was quite interesting for somewhere that's done so much testing. I'd love to go there and actually properly inquire about all these things because I didn't realize they did so many tests there. So many aeroplanes. The other tip that they gave, which was really good. And I've tried it out myself before telling you just in case it was, <laughs> it was wrong. You know, when you're making pesto or pistu, which is the one that doesn't have pine nuts and cheese in, that's just the basil, it's all salt, garlic, olive oil one. Well, if you blanch the basil first, so big boiling water, throw all your basil in until it goes a really good dark green color, scoop it out and then put it straight into cold water so you stop the cooking immediately. When you make your pesto or your pistu from that, it doesn't go brown. You know when you make fresh pesto and you leave it in the fridge for a day, even if it's covered, it's, it goes brown on top, that completely stops it. And the color is unbelievable, it is so bright. Because you know when you crush basil leaves, they go brown really, really fast anyway. If you blanch them, they don't. Brilliant. And if you're blanching the basil, you can use that um, as a kind of extra stock for putting in soups and stuff and you get all the basil flavor. So yeah, quite interesting. But before I go, I'm just gonna do a quick whiz round because all those seeds I sowed like just the other day, like loads of them are up. And also there's some stuff to look at in the polytunnel. So let's just do that whiz round first. The mizuna is up, pushed all the compost off the top. <laughs> and on the other stuff, we have got the red pack choy has come up. The green wave mustard is all coming up. Beetroot's a bit slower, obviously. Um, down here, the lettuce is all making an appearance. Quick scoot around the polytunnel. We have got redness occurring, which is exciting. They'll be ready in the next couple of days. Um, loads of different ones are coming along. We've got plums down there and there's some stripies in the back there. These ones are just starting to redden up as well. So that's pretty good. It's all coming along quite well in here. After a bad start, it seems to be catching up beautifully. My word, it's hot in here. Whoo! Yeah, okay. So it's just coming up to 10 o'clock now and the temperature is skyrocketing. So yeah, that is, that is it. That is the end of the week. I've just got some water. So it's not very exciting, but I'll cheers you anyway. I've just been refilling it from the hose about a hundred times this morning already. So I'm going to need a wee on my way home probably. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I just wanted to say uh, for anybody who's in the UK or experienced, or in fact, um, Europe at the moment, God, the temperatures in Europe. Ooh. Um, but just to say, you know, I hope everybody's stuff is going to survive the heat, good watering, in fact, I hope we're gonna survive the heat. <laughs> so to my fantastic Patreon supporters, whose names you will see at the end of the video, uh, cheers Monday, it's videos coming out this afternoon. So I'll see you then. For everybody else, it will be Tuesday and we will be past the heat wave by the time you're watching the video. So let's hope we've all survived. <laughs> let's hope all the plants have survived. <sighs> yeah, not too many casualties, hopefully. Cheers. Yep, it is blooming warm, girlies, isn't it? Hmm? I'll be up later to check when you get loads of water. Stay hydrated, girlies. <laughs>